Okay, so we've looked at sequential or linear uh, linear code, and we've also looked at selection. This one, we're going to look at one of the first and probably the easiest to understand of the um, repetition steps, the commands. We've got the same things here: submain, dimension of uh, a, a variable, in this case an integer, a write line and a read line. But we've then got this for next. We've got the variable you're being used here for int counter equals 1 to 10. So we're giving int counter a range from 1 to 10 and it runs from the 4 to the next command. We've then got an instruction. We could have as many lines of instruction, but in this case we've only got one line in there. But we, let's say we could have as many lines of code as we wanted in there. What this does is it goes, it's a counter. It counts from 1, runs the code, gets to next, rotates round, and then int count will become 2. Runs the code, goes to next, comes round, becomes 3. And keeps going round until int count is equal to 10, runs the code, gets to next, comes to here, fails the test, drops to the last line. So once int count is 11, it fails. Let's just see how that runs. It's very simple, it's just like that. If I press enter, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 10. So all it's done is gone through there, in count was 1, write the line, go around, write the line, go around, and keep doing that, and you get each one of those lines. Now the for next is really good for counting, and that's what you use it for. If you've got a known range of values you want to go through, and repeat the line a known number of times. But those known, known number of times do not have to be known by the programmer. For example, let me take this console read line and rather than just throw it away as an enter let's take int number one is equal to that so now I'm going to put a number in there notice that my int number one has got an error why has it got an error? well actually because it tells you it's, it's not declared I need to declare this this is the nice thing about this editor it really helps you along to know where your errors are so I've now declared it click away and there we have it but that allows me to put int number here. Now as a programmer I now don't know how many times this is going to count but it's going to be based upon whatever the user wants. So if I run this and then enter a value let's say 23 I get all the values to 23. Now 1, 2, 3 all the way down to 23. And that's a really neat thing to be able to allow your users to do. I can set the upper limit quite simply by using a variable. In fact I can do it for both, for the lower and upper limit. Something else I can do with this as well. I can actually do something like this. This is an additional command for the for next. For this step two. It's probably easier to show you than actually explain. I'm going to take this again. Notice the step two is there. I'm going to do 23 again. And rather than go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's gone 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. It's actually jumped two places. It's done 1, gone round, come back round, and then gone R. I don't just go to the next number, I've got to step two numbers. So rather than 1 to 2, it's 1 to 3, then round, to 5, then round, to 7, until we get to the number set by int number 1. So we can actually have quite a number of little bits and pieces here using this step command. The step command can also come into its own when we do the following. If I now change this around, sometimes I don't want to go up, I want to go backwards. But if I run that, there it is, int number 1 to 1, if I enter in 23, it's going to go 23, but the computer doesn't know what to do, it doesn't understand that it needs to count backwards. So what we do instead is we tell it step minus 1, so subtract 1 for each step. Now when we run this code, we put 23 in, it then counts backwards for us, and we have 23, 22, 21. That's really useful. That is repetition. Our first repetition, it's worth noting, worth being aware of. It's all there to play with. Okay?